How do you feel about spiders? Our most viewed video on YouTube is of a giant tarantula on my hand, which I filmed down in the Dominican Republic some years ago. That video has more than 34 million views with tens of thousands of comments, predominantly from people that are uh, either scared of spiders or find them repulsive. And I tell you, you know, I see the beauty in them and the complexity. I mean, imagine that hundreds of millions of years ago, somewhere on this planet, a spider originated and somehow or rather it got silk coming out of it and it learned how to weave a web. Incredible evolution. He's making his web going round and round in circles. But like I say, you know, so many people have a misconception. They're afraid of them. They think they're venomous. Even Sean Connery as James Bond was petrified of tarantulas. You can see the spider weaving his net. Uh, you can see his hind legs working and the silk coming out of the back of him. Incredible. Incredible the way it's weaving it together. In the background you have a bee coming in onto a flower. And in the foreground, where is he? There he is. Excuse me. Oh, that's remarkable. I've never seen that done before. It comes up from the back and then like it's two hind feet, it pokes it to the side, attaching it as it goes round and round. Universally around this planet of ours, there are two thought processes about how we came to be. One, scientifically, we all evolved. We all started from a common denominator. And wow. everything you see on this planet evolved from one thing way back when. It doesn't matter if it's human beings, it's the plant, it's the bee, it's a spider. We all have a common ancestor. The other thought is, is that some supreme being came here uh, to our planet and made everything in a week. And, well, not even a week, six days resting on the seventh. But whatever you believe, you have to admit that things like these creatures that we so often have a misconception about are incredible. And by the misconception, like I said, I'm talking about fear absolute petrifying fear that people have of spiders but not only spiders i mean we humans considering our sizes and, and intelligence we fear everything from thunder lightning spiders uh, we recently had a relative staying with us who's afraid of frogs and not only afraid but deathly afraid to the point that they couldn't even look at a video of a frog on tv you know it just scared the by jesus out of them was always afraid of mice and as many women are afraid of mice you know it, it's uh, just quite interesting I guess part of our nature here the spider has caught a little fly and it's now devouring it like I said you know if you prescribe to the scientific notion all these creatures the incredible uh, thing how they developed and then somehow or rather they just paused in their development most recently, Cindy caught a black widow spider outside near our garden. We still have old wood piles and she was moving them around. And there she was, big and beautiful. And I mean, it is absolutely a beautiful creature. Its blackness is so shiny. I mean, the most expensive cars would be envious of a paint job like that. Absolutely remarkable, shiny, smooth, beautiful spider. And yet, it's also venomous. That's how this thing has evolved. It doesn't just build a, a web, which it does do, but it also has a venom to disable its prey. And that venom is very powerful. Powerful enough that if a person has a weak immune system, the black widow bite could at the very least hospitalize somebody and in the worst case scenario now you have to understand fear is something that's built into a lot of these creatures so it's not there aren't many cases of spider bite killing people 
at least not from the Black Widow, but it is a remote possibility. And what's really incredible about the Black Widow is that we don't hear much talk about it here in British Columbia, southern British Columbia. We hear about ticks and mosquitoes, you know, stuff like that. But there's a lot of black widows. As a matter of fact, near the house Cindy and I are living in, we have spotted several in the back, several in the front. So there's uh, quite a community of them around us, and it's not only around our house. You know, it's not like we have some exclusivity on the black widow population. But they would be found throughout the, the Okanagan and the southern region of British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan. The hourglass on her bottom side. All parts of southern Canada. Cindy found it in a wood pile outside. Now, something else people might not be aware of is that we do have our own species of scorpions in southern British Columbia. And most recently, a woman in Vancouver, this, in the last week, she got bitten by a scorpion in her bedroom during the middle of the night. She was turning over something. Uh, jabbed her, she wasn't sure, she kind of saw it scurrying away, went to the hospital, got treated for it, doctors laughed when she said she thought it was a scorpion, went home, started tearing the bed apart, looking all over, found the scorpion still alive, and beat the crap out of it with a shoe. By beating the crap out of it, I mean, they slammed it, slammed it, so, you know, it, it was done. But uh, it was thought that somehow during uh, transportation of produce, which actually we have videos about, you know, we go to a lot of farms in Oliver or Soyuz area, and many of the orchardists, uh, what they do is load up their own produce. Funny that she should have that hourglass on the bottom side. Cherries, peaches, apples, whatever, and haul them into big cities. Not much of a warning to anything that she's dangerous selling them to small merchants or even out of the back of trucks in some instances. And this can take place anywhere from Vancouver, Vancouver Island, all the way to Alberta and, and provinces, because we do have a robust agricultural uh, economy here. So, you know, animals, insects, whatever, can get into these uh, shipments by mistake and then end up in... Uh, cities hundreds of kilometers away. As a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, Cindy and I were out picking grapes. And uh, we're picking grapes, table grapes for eating. Uh, and look down at the container we're picking them in. And there is a praying mantis. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how it got there. I wasn't aware of it crawling down. But there it was. That, by the way, is the silk of the black widow spider. And it is said that the silk of the black widow spider is incredibly strong. As a matter of fact, she can make a web strong enough to stop and catch a mouse. Now, imagine that. You know, and then when these spiders pull that material, that silk, out from themselves as they're making their web... You know, you think a magician is something when, you know, they're standing on a stage and they're pulling out these handkerchiefs which they stuffed into their sleeves or wherever they got them hidden. It's nothing compared to what a spider does repeatedly. I mean, it's, it's an incredible part of evolution. And it's hard to believe that so many people are just repulsed by them instead of seeing the incredible beauty and complexity of life and... Uh, it's it, it just amazing. And then think about this too, by the way, if you're watching the spider, is that when you go to bed at night, in many parts of our world, that's when the spiders come out in the middle of the night. They're crawling over your bed, maybe over your hair, your face. They're crawling around your kitchen floor. They're crawling in your living room, catching 
harmful insects, or not even harmful insects, it doesn't matter if it's a fly or a moth or whatever, but that's when they come out hunting. That isn't to instill fear on you. What that is about is that it's a complex world we live in. And uh, there are creatures of day, there are creatures of night, not only spiders. Outside you have bats coming out, and like I said, moths come out at night gathering around lights and stuff like that. There's a lot of different creatures that have evolved in different ways on our planet. And again, hard to comprehend, for me anyway, that science says we all started from a common point. Especially in light of the fact that there's so much effort right now by science to search for life on other planets. And, mo and in the last week or two, news has come out that there's a planet very similar to Earth in the next, was it, galaxy, solar system, whatever that they spotted that they think might be able to uh, sustain life. And uh, how they think that, well, I got no idea, but they got the big brains and the big money to spend on searching for intelligent life when uh, we have such incredible things on this planet that we still should be learning more about. And not only learning about these things like spiders and snakes and all the other creatures, but learning their importance to us. Like right now, I was watching uh, news out of Florida, and of course, pretty well everyone's heard that there's a Zika virus outbreak. So in Florida, they got these big uh, planes now flying overhead, spraying pesticides, which, by the way, might be harmful to humans, but we don't worry about that too much. What we got to do is kill all the bad mosquitoes, but the mosquitoes represent food for many creatures. She's that so includes beautiful. spiders, and that includes bats, and that includes so many different things. So you kill off the mosquitoes, and you end up with uh, another problem. This, by the way, was a praying mantis I found while we were picking grapes a couple of years ago. And I had no problem putting the praying mantis on my hand. It shows actually, again, very beautiful creature. Very misunderstood. People think that they're this horrendous creature hell-bent on killing everything it can and uh, some of the videos on YouTube have you know people connecting uh, praying mantis and wasp or hornet or something together for a battle to the death I, I just think that's so wrong they're so beautiful these creatures and as I said misunderstood much like gorillas were a hundred years ago you know when King Kong came on the scene and this big ape had to be killed because it was harming humans whatever i love nature and it's amazing all the different things we learn just around our home or even when we travel we were in the riviera maya and uh, wandering around our resort when i spotted this creature i've never seen it before it's a stick insect and the first embarrassing thing is I got it mixed up. I thought its back was its front and its front was its back. Totally backwards. Now look at the size of it compared to my hand. And uh, like I said, I didn't know which was it coming, going. Uh, I wasn't frightened of it. Silly me. You know, here I am saying I wasn't frightened of it. But I did put it on my hand, and uh, it crawled around my hand, then went up my arm onto my shoulders. Uh, a real cool experience, but again, a very unique creature. And another Stick one of our yeah. evolutionary relatives. That's it, crawling on my shoulder. Another beautiful and unique example of evolution. Of course, our actions there got the attention of other vacationers, so they were taking pictures of it. Now, as I said, I did put the stick insect on me. I've had tarantula on me, on my hand and stuff. But I didn't do that with the black widow this time. And I'm saying this time because previously when I worked in construction... The guys where I worked caught a black widow, and I put that on my hand to show that there was no danger from it. 
but with this black widow she was beautiful not threatening but i was a little bit more cautious with this black <laughs> widow however should we get another one i will get a video of it on my hand because basically these creatures use their venom and uh, uh, other abilities they have to defend themselves. It's not aggression that gets them going. So I don't recommend people do stuff like that, but there's also, like I said, so much misconception about them. One more thing I would like to add is that it doesn't matter if it's a black widow or a praying mantis, a stick insect in uh, Riviera Maya, the things that we capture and film, we get the video of them and then let them go go about their business. The Black Widow was released in our yard. It's out there somewhere, hopefully surviving and thriving, and uh, Praying Mantis was let go, so respect nature, please.